Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Classroom Jekutyo. In this video, we are going to look at steps in scientific investigations. Well, in primary school, you actually have already learned about science process skills. There are 12 of them. The first one is observing, followed by classifying, measuring and using numbers, making inferences, predicting, communicating, using time-space relationships, interpreting data, defining operationally, controlling variables, making a hypothesis, and also experimenting. Here are the 12 process skills that you will get to practice at all times throughout the whole year when you study science, okay? Well, what then is a scientific method? It is a systematic uh, method used to solve problems in science. It consists of a few very important steps. Let me walk with you through these steps as we try to solve a problem, an example, okay? So first, look at this picture. Well, this girl spills some water and she's wondering what she can use to absorb the water quickly. So first step in scientific method will be identifying the problem. We need to identify a problem first. Okay, the problem that we can test with a scientific investigation. So in this case, her problem is she is wondering what she can use to absorb the water quickly. Secondly, look at this boy. The boy come and say, well, cloth towel will definitely absorb water more quickly compared to tissue paper. Well, she made this statement before he, uh, he made this statement before he try it out or before he carry out an investigation. So this is called a hypothesis. So step number two, we construct a hypothesis. Hypothesis is the initial explanation of the observation before we start investigating, before it is proven. And this hypothesis need to be tested properly, which means hypothesis or hypothesis is a statement that we make a guess that we have before we start an experiment. We guess first, we make a wild guess. Okay, I think this is what's gonna happen. Let's test it out. That is your hypothesis statement. Number three, control the variables. Well, variables are physical quantities that influence your observation or scientific phenomena. We have three types of variables, the manipulated variables, responding variables and constant variables. I'm sure you have uh, studied about this tree in your primary school. So how do we differentiate them? Manipulated variables, normally we determine them before experiment. And we can only know the responding variable after we do the experiment. And constant variables are the things that we need to keep constant, meaning we cannot change, so that the experiment that we do is fair, okay? So in this case of the problem of this girl wanting to find out what she can use to absorb the water quickly, the manipulated variables, responding variables, and constant variable will be type of towels, okay? That will be your manipulated variable. Why? Because we already determined it before the experiment. We already know we want to test the cloth and also tissue paper. So these two before experiment, we already fixed. So that is your manipulated variable. What is your responding variable? Responding variable, we only know after we do the experiment. So it is the amount of water absorbed. Before we do experiment, we can only guess. We do not know for sure. After the experiment, we can calculate, we can measure. Then that is the responding variable. What about the constant variable? What is something that we cannot change so that this experiment is fair? It is the type of liquid absorbed. So for both tissue and cloth that we are going to test out, we have to absorb the same kind of liquid that is water. We cannot use water for uh, tissue paper and maybe oil for the cloth. No, it has to be the same. 
Okay, so that this experiment is fair. Next, we need to plan our experiment. We need to design one experiment carefully before we start and choose the right materials and apparatus for the experiment. And then we can conduct the experiment. Now we will test the hypothesis of the boy. So we use the tissue and the cloth. Okay? And we must practice precaution all the time so that our data that we collect is accurate and safety measures must be followed as well so that no accidents happen. So in this case, we can use tissue and we can use cloth and try to absorb water and then we measure how much water they absorb. And then we collect data. Okay, so after you immerse your tissue and your cloth in the water, we squeeze them out and we measure and then we have our data and we, it needs to be carried out carefully and we need to use the suitable instruments and taking into consideration if there's any random or systematic error. Remember, we talk about this in 1.4. You can scroll back to look for the previous videos, okay? And then the measurements need to be carried out at least three times so that we can have a more accurate and precise reading. Meaning we, we repeat the experiment three times so that we have three sets of data. And then we can use a table to record our data. Next, we need to analyze and interpret data. We, not, we, we don't just write down the data. We need to understand the data. The data needs to make sense. So analysis needs to be accompanied by effective communication forms such as graph and table. We, from the data that we have collected, we can interpret it by making a graphic uh, presentation. For example, a table here. Okay, the graphs and tables will assist us to easily interpret the data. So from the table, we can clearly see that, okay, the tissue paper can only absorb somewhere around 11 or 12 centimeter cube of water, whereas the cloth can absorb more than 20. So we know that the cloth actually can absorb better than tissue paper. And then we make a conclusion. This is where we talk about our hypothesis. Based on our analysis, we will know that if the hypothesis is accepted or rejected. So the little boy's uh, hypothesis earlier saying that the cloth tower will absorb water more quickly compared to tissue paper is accepted. We prove it through the experiment. Okay. Just in case the hypothesis is rejected, then we need to make a new hypothesis and carry out the experiment again to prove it, okay? After we make a conclusion, we will need to write an experimental report. Write a report. Normally, after your experiment, your teacher will require you to complete the experiment report and we have a lot of very important data and information that we must include in our experiment report so first of all we have our problem statement remember the girl has a problem she identified the problem so we need to write that down and then the hypothesis which we make a guess on what will happen aim of the experiment and variables we have learned three different type of variables we need to write that down as well materials and apparatus that we use in the experiment, the procedure, how we carry out the experiment, observation and results where we write down what we see or what we have observed. Normally, we can uh, put them in table form if it includes a measurement. Okay, analysis and interpretation of data. Normally, we can present them as a, a graph or a chart. And then we need to write our conclusion, whether our hypothesis is accepted or rejected. Let's take a look at an example of a complete uh, uh, science experiment report. So following the scientific method, we have different steps, remember? So the first step, identifying the problem. Here is our problem statement, followed by our hypothesis. This is when we construct our hypothesis, then don't forget to write your aim and include your, your uh, diagram if there is one. And then we control variables, okay, where we list down all the three different types of variables. And we have materials and apparatus. 
And then when we go to the step of planning and conducting the experiment, we need to write down the procedure. Okay, for procedure, I need you to pay attention here. Procedure must be written in passive form. This is an active form sentence. Use a pendulum of uh, with a length of 20 cm. This is an example of active form sentence. For a passive form sentence, it will sound something like this. A pendulum with a length of 20 cm is used. Okay, so this is a passive form sentence. For experiment, we need to use this type of sentences. Next, we will have our result and over here in this report, it is in a table form. We record it. Okay, remember, look at this one. There's reading one, reading two, reading three. So the experiment is repeated three times to get three sets of data so they can find average. So your data is a lot more accurate. Okay, so this is step five, present and uh, present the data collected. And then we need to interpret the data, which normally we use a graph. Okay. And then finally, we have a conclusion where we state that whether or not our hypothesis is accepted. All right. Well, that's all from Jay Kutio in this video. I shall see you in the next video. Bye. If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.